My name is Nico and I'm a cat lab nurse working in London and we are here to talk about cardiac catheterization laboratory uh, because you might be interested to know what's in a cat lab or you might be a nurse who is uh, looking into other field of nursing and wanted to join the cat lab team. Uh, so let's start by uh, describing what a cat lab is. Uh, this is basically a place or a department in hospital wherein we perform minimally invasive uh, procedures or tests that can treat and diagnose cardiovascular diseases. Um, most of the time, these tests and procedures um, are done using catheters. These are thin, uh, long, hollow tubes that go, go straight to your groin or your wrist or your neck, and it can go straight to your heart to see if there's any problem with the function or the structures of your heart. Let's say, for example, there's a problem with, uh, uh, with the coronary, art coronary arteries. If there's a narrowing or there's a poor blood flow, if there's a problem with your heart's valves or muscles and the likes. So what sort of procedures do we do inside the lab? We do coronary angiogram, angioplasty, uh, right heart catheterization, um, mitral clip valve repair, TAVI, um, ablation and uh, devices such as uh, insertion of a pacemaker, uh, implant or explant of uh, ILR, ICDs, so much more. The team is composed of, of uh, interventional cardiologist who is the operator uh, of the procedure and supervised by a consultant. We've got a scrub nurse and also a circulating nurse who uh, assists the doctors um, and also monitors the patient's needs making sure that the client is comfortable on the table. Um, you also got a physiologist who uh, focuses on uh, monitoring the heart function uh, while we have the procedure. And lastly, we've got the radiographers who um, maneuvers the specialized x-ray equipment that we use in the lab and moves it at different angles. Once the receptionist has verified the letter coming from an elective patient, um, we place a patient in either on a chair or a bed, depending on the procedure they're having. So if it's just an angiogram, they can just go on a radial bay on a lazy boy chair. Or if it's an angioplasty or another uh, procedure, they could have a bed. Um, and as a nurse, the first thing we do is, of course, establish rapport, take the observations, take the vital signs. Um, and... In the place of work, and we use a tool wherein we check um, other information that would help us determine if the patient is safe to go inside the lab to have the procedure. The most common information, of course, that we have to check is the patient's profile, which consists of the complete name of the patient, um, their uh, date of birth, their patient number, NHS number, um, and also the next of kin and their address. We have to at least uh, check for two or three identifiers to ensure that, that this is the right patient. And um, uh, we check for the patient's height and weight. If the patient has any allergies to food, um, uh, latex or medications, um, we have to check as well for the patient's uh, medical and surgical a history if the patient had any previous uh, surgeries if the patient had um, uh, medical uh, problems like uh, uh, COPD asthma if the patient had a heart attack before if the patient already had like a, a bypass surgery or an angiogram or an angioplasty an ablation or if the patient has a, a device in him like a pacemaker or an ILR or an ICD uh, we also have to check for uh, if the patient has been having any recent signs and symptoms like uh, chest pains, palpitations, if the patient has been having hypertension. Also, we also check for the patient's um, medications, current medications being taken 
like blood thinners, um, cardiac medications, um, uh, if the patient is taking any um, uh, diuretics, blood thinners, or if the patient has diabetes, if he's taking um, oral hypoglycemics or like insulin, um, these things should be noted in in uh, in the tool that we're using um, so that the patient is uh, prepared and safe to go in a procedure. Um, we'd also do an ECG uh, to, to check the heart's, of course, heart's rhythm and heart's uh, function before going in. Uh, the doctor would, would check this before and also we do another one after the procedure. Um, we also check for the bloods of the patient. If the patient had recent bloods taken, that's good, at least in the last um, week or in the last few days. Um, but just to be safe, we'd also do a spot check once we've established an IV cannula to the patient. Just to check if there's any problems with it, uh, the electrolytes of the patient, uh, hemoglobin, creatinine, um, the blood sugar, if all of these are within the normal parameters. So that would be perfect for the patient to go inside the lab. Um, what else? Um, we also do, uh, of course, um, uh, encourage the patient to go to the toilet before going in so they'll be comfortable while uh, lying on the operating table. Uh, if the patient needs to shave any part of the body or clean any part of the body, uh, we also change them into um, a hospital gown and all the properties must be stored inside the cupboard and, and be locked. And the, one of the most important thing, of course, we have to remember before going inside the lab is to have the patient sign a consent form. And we'd ask a doctor to explain the risks and advantages of having a certain procedure uh, and ensure that the patient is fully informed um, uh, before signing um, a consent a consent form. Also, we have to ensure that the patient hasn't eaten um, or should be nailed by mouth uh, at least six hours before the procedure um, and should have clear liquids at least two hours before the procedure. Uh, depending on the procedure, they, could, they should be encouraged to take a shower, clean themselves, um, jewelry and nail polish should be removed. Now we move into um, how we look after our patients or how I look after my patients inside the lab. Generally, we have to ensure the safety of everyone inside the lab. Um, this can be done by ensuring that infection control measures are implemented. Uh, we start by proper hand hygiene of all members of the healthcare team. And that includes if you are the operator uh, doing the right uh, surgical hand scrubbing. We are exposed to radiation, so everybody should be wearing the appropriate size of a personal protective equipment that includes um, the thyroid shield, the lead gown, which should be covering your torso uh, until past your knee, uh, below the knee. And um, of course, you have to wear a mask, the appropriate surgical caps. Um, if there's a need for um, a face covering or an eye shield, uh, of course, the gown and the sterile gloves. Ensure that all equipment are working properly and all uh, materials or supplies that we need for the procedure are, are there. Uh, I mean to say, we should be well stocked before going in because it's hard to do a procedure when, let's say, for instance, you're missing a catheter, uh, uh, the right size of a sheet, or you're missing a coronary wire and you have to run around just to get uh, this. <laughs> and. Uh, so check if the rhesus trolley is complete and double check if the environment is safe for everyone. Um, if the lab is sanitized and clean, organized, um, there's no chance for everyone to have any trips or fall. Um, so everybody is safe. Um, and once the patient goes into the lab, um, make the patient comfortable and everybody should do uh, the WHO checklist 
uh, where they check again the identity of the patient, if the patient has consented uh, with the procedure, and if the patient is uh, completely safe to have the procedure. So these are the responsibilities of, uh, of ev actually everyone. So once the patient is on the table, um, we have to uh, be responsible in monitoring the vital signs of the patient. Um, and if there's a need for sedation, we have to check the capnography capnography, uh, respirations, and the saturations of the patient and work hand-in-hand uh, hand together with the team to ensure that um, the procedure goes well and smooth. Once the procedure is done, um, safely return the patient to the, uh, to the ward or to the recovery area and prepare the lab for the next one by cleaning and, and disposing the materials or equipment used in the appropriate bins and um, sanitize and clean the machines used as well. Our main goal after a cat lab procedure is to recover a patient. Um, what I usually do is follow the ABCD approach. Um, I think this is a good method for all cat lab procedures uh, done for a patient. Um, ABCD stands for airway, breathing, circulation, disability, and exposure. Um, I've been using this uh, since I started working here in the UK and um, I think it's a thorough examination if there's something wrong post-procedure if the patient is having complications. Check for any signs of complications such as bleeding or bruising or changes in uh, sensorium. Um, if the patient of course had anesthesia, you have to reorient the patient of the date, time and place. Um, Feed the patient because they have been fasting. Um, check what the patient had. If, for instance, a pacemaker, check if er, there are any signs of, of problems in the dressing. Um, if it's an angiogram, check the TR band. Um, if it's uh, like a femoral approach, uh, in a, in a PCI or in an ablation, check for any bleeding as well on the groin. Make sure the patient is, um, if the patient had a, a groin access, make sure they're uh, flat for at least two hours. Um, yeah, that's it. And um, once the patient has been recovered, is fully alert, uh, oriented, all the observations are stable, um, sometimes the patient uh, recovers ideally after four hours and then um, we send them home with their TTAs with their instructions um, or discharge uh, letters and to add more on the on our responsibilities as nurses um, when recovering a patient is of course to if there are their comfort if they're in pain we can give them pain medications if um, they're nauseous, we can give antibiotic medications. To combat infection, the patient might need to finish um, antibiotics prescribed post-procedure and um, there may be a need for um, further diagnostic tests such as ECG, chest x-ray, or V-scan uh, in order to help the healthcare team um, develop a complete, holistic, uh, and effective plan of care so that's the end of the video. Uh, I hope you learned something from it. Um, as a cat lab nurse, that's how I approach my patients before, during, and after a procedure. I might have missed some stuff uh, that I should have mentioned earlier. So if you're a fellow nurse who also works in the lab, comment down below if I missed something. and um, Or you can share your best practices and then we can help each other out uh, in improving our services for our clientele. So um, thank you for watching and God bless.